Okay, so we're looking at a new type of cell right now, but the steps that we use to analyze them aren't all that different at first, so I'm just let's just walk into this like we haven't noticed anything's different, and we'll see what happens when we have an aqueous solution of potassium sulfate and we hook up an electrical cell or a redox cell to it, and let's find out how it behaves. Aqueous means watery, so this solution has water in it. Potassium sulfate means we have potassium ions and sulfate ions. And our standard drill is we go to the data book. We're going to read down the left side and then up the right side looking for our strongest oxidizer and strongest reducer. And that'll tell us what reactions are happening here. This works for any kind of cell, so it's a process you're probably familiar with by now. So we're looking for water, potassium, sulfates. Water, potassium, sulfates, no, nope, 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 blah, blah, blah. Water, potassium, sulfates, where are you? Here's water, but only with nitrate ion, water. This should be our strongest oxidizing agent, is water turning into hydrogen gas and hydroxides. Now if we go up the right side, you might get excited when you see this, but we have potassium ions, not potassium metal, so this actually, this K actually doesn't help us, so our search continues. Water, potassium, sulfates, water, potassium, sulfates. There's sulfates, but only with lead, that's no good. Water, potassium, sulfates. Water, potassium, sulfates. That's not water, it's hydrogen peroxide. Ding, here we are. This is our strongest reducing agent, water again. So, let's get those copied in. Our strongest oxidizer is 2H2O. Picks up two electrons and produces a hydrogen and two hydroxides. And let's snag the voltage while we're here. This reaction is as written in the book, electrons on the left, and its voltage is given at minus 0 0.83 volts. I trust you have your data book next to you as you watch this, so you can confirm that if you want to. The other reaction up here is water going to the left, turning into oxygen and hydrogen ions. So for our strongest reducer, we have 2H2O, arrow, and that's turning into oxygen and four hydrogens and four electrons. This reaction would as written is 1.23 volts, but since we're reversing it, we get minus 1.23 volts for ours. Now, if we want to add these together, we can't add them together. Do you see why not? The electrons aren't matched up. This thing is talking about two electrons and this about four. That's no good. These numbers must be matched. So. We'll leave this at 4. I'll double this one so that it's also 4 electrons. So twice as much water, twice as many electrons, twice as much hydrogen, twice as many hydroxides. No change to the voltage, remember? In thermo, you multiply delta H's by 2, but you don't multiply voltages that way. So if we add this up now, what do we get? We got 4 water plus 2 water here. We can combine that and just say 6 water molecules. Plus, we don't have to count the electrons anymore. Now that we've matched them, they're no longer relevant. Uh, we get two, hydro two, sorry, two hydrogens and an oxygen and four hydroxides and four hydrogens. And when you add up these voltages, you get minus 2.06 volts. Now, this reaction can be polished up a little more. This is like pure acid, and this is pure base. These are not going to coexist. These are going to jump each other and combine into water molecules very quickly. So where you have H plus and OH, 
guaranteed these will combine together into four H2Os. And now that we have H2O, we can say, hey, I've got six on the left, four on the right. Four of these are actually spectators. So we can say these four waters I'm just going to throw out. Four of these waters I'm going to throw out, so actually only two remain. And this finished reaction was a very big deal in chemistry when they first discovered it. They found that you can take water and pass an electric current through it, and it breaks up into hydrogen and oxygen. For hundreds or thousands of years, they thought that water was a basic element, that it was one of the fundamental things that the universe was made out of. And suddenly they find you can break water into individual pieces. Not only that, every time they did it, there was always exactly twice as much hydrogen as there was oxygen. The ratio was precisely 2 to 1, and that's where our H2O came, comes from. You can hook up balloons here and watch the hydrogen balloon inflate twice as fast as the oxygen balloon does. So that told them a whole bunch of fundamental things about chemistry from one little experiment. And to do it, you just need water with a power supply hooked up to it that can produce more than 2.06 volts. That's your minimum activation voltage for this reaction. Negative 2.06 means this reaction is not spontaneous. Water doesn't just fall apart by itself. And if you put one volt or two volts into it, still nothing will happen. The electrons have 2.06 volts worth of resistance to this reaction. Even if you get up to 2.06, that's the break-even point. That means the, the reaction still hasn't started. But as soon as you go over 206 by even a little bit, then the reaction begins and you start to see bubbles. Some of them are hydrogen bubbles. Some of them are oxygen bubbles. It's a neat reaction with a lot of history behind it. Another interesting thing, and I want you to remember this because we're going to try to catch you with it later. We said this was a potassium sulfate cell, and yet the reaction had nothing to do with it. Water can be a very important reactant in cells like this, and sometimes it can step up and do the oxidation and the reduction. And these chemicals are just left out in the cold. The, this potassium is not as good an oxidizing agent as water. Sulfate isn't as good a reducing agent as water is, so the water just took over and did the whole reaction. You'll see later, sometimes we try to set up a cell to electrolyze something valuable, like we want to get aluminum or salt or sodium and chlorides, things like that. If water is present, sometimes it jumps in and takes over the show and it can cause trouble. So watch for that, it's going to come up again. Will it happen with lead nitrate? Let's find out. We have aqueous, which, which means the water is there, so maybe the water might participate. We have lead 2. And we have nitrates. So off we go to our redox table. Clean up the stuff from the previous example. So. Our possible characters are water, lead, and nitrates. Let's see who is going to take part today. Water, lead, and nitrates. Water, lead, and nitrates. Water, lead, and nitrates. I'm sorry for chanting that over and over. I, that's how I hold it in my head. If you have a better memory than me, then you can do this quietly. Water, lead, and nitrates. Here's nitrates, but we need acid and we don't have it. Here's water, but only with oxygen, which we don't necessarily have. Water, lead. We have lead two ions right here. Lead two is our strongest oxidizer. I'll get that in there right now. Lead two plus two electrons reduces to lead metal. And let's get the voltage. We're sure to need it. Minus 0 0.13 volts. Negative 0 0.13 V. Okay, so that's our strongest oxidizer. Our strongest reducer has got to be water, lead, or nitrate. So now we read up the right side. Water, lead, nitrates. Water, lead, nitrates. Water, here's lead, but only with sulfate. If only we had sulfate instead of nitrate, but we don't. Water, lead, nitrates. Water, lead, nit that's peroxide. Water, lead, 
nitrates, water, here we are. I believe that's our strongest oxidizer. So, the reaction we're getting there is the same one as in the previous example. It's water, oxidizing to oxygen, four, hydrogen, four hydrogen ions, and four electrons. And in the data book, this thing is listed as being plus 1.23 volts, but because our reaction is flipped, we're starting with the water side, we get minus 1.23 volts. Uh, if I want to add these together, I need to match up the electrons, so twice as much, twice as much, twice as much, don't change the voltage. And when we combine those, goodbye to the electrons, we get that lead ions react with water to produce lead metal, oxygen, and acid. And the voltage for that is minus 1.36 volts. So, is this a reaction that happens by itself? Nope, not with a negative voltage. This means this reaction will not go. If you put lead ions in water, They'll just sit there being slightly toxic, but they won't actually conduct this reaction because the voltage is one, minus 1 1.36. If you want this reaction to happen, you would have to connect a power supply that's like 1.37 volts or stronger. And if you did, then you'd start to see... well, what would you see? Lead ions are colorless, so you wouldn't see a color change. You would start to see bubbles as the oxygen formed, the pH would start to drop as acid formed, and you'd start to get a precipitate as solid lead formed as little particles, and then they'd start to sink down to the bottom of the, of the container. So you could use this to purify water. If you had water that you thought had lead contamination in it, this reaction would turn the lead into a solid, and then you could use a filter and get it out of there. The water you produced would be acidic, unfortunately, that's not great, but at least it would be lead-free if you ran this reaction long enough. <laughs>